Luminous Person. Today I'm going to be taking a look at another custom figure for today. This is the Candyman from the 1988 story, The Happiness Patrol, which is from season 25, where Sylvester McCoy asked the Doctor. This is quite an interesting character to make a figure of. I think it's one that character definitely should have made a figure of. I'm surprised that they didn't in, the hate, in their heyday of like action figure things. I can say, see a Candyman, much like I could see a Yeti selling really well. I could see a Candyman selling really well as well. I doubt we'll ever get a Candyman figure because it would just be impossible to do a B&M set with this. And I doubt we're going to get any classic figures outside of the B&M set. So this for me was always going to be one that I really liked because I love the, the design of the costume. The monster is such a great iconic design. When the Seventh Doctor era, like when I think of the Seventh Doctor era, the monsters I always think of are like the Hemovores, the Candyman and of course the iconic Imperial Daleks from Re Remembrance of the Daleks. They're the the creatures I think of with from some of the Dodger era. It's obviously a very 80s design, very colourful as you can see. It's got very bold colours here, like what you'd expect from the kind of 80s sort of slash 90s thing that this um, creature was in that era, that era of sort of design, I guess. So you've got some, you've got some very bold pink and reds, some yellows, and it just really stands out on the shelf. I think it's a great, it's a great sort of custom that you can do because you've got bold paints. It doesn't really matter if it's inaccurate. Um, first of all, I'm going to talk about how this is probably completely the wrong size. If I get my Sylvester McCoy figure, where is he? Here he is. <laughs> you can tell that he is much shorter than he should be because he is much taller than Sylvester McCoy so right off the bat that's probably the thing that annoys me the most about this figure um if I was ever going to do this again it would be to try and make it taller but at the same time I think if I did make it taller it'd be unlikely that it'd stand so I mean you win some you some um Sonic we have some obviously some sort of trademark sweets here you've got some got your bassets, sort of licorice of all sort. You've got this thing at the top is also a licorice. It's basically the Candyman, the Bassett's Candyman. In fact, I believe there was a lawsuit around the time of the Happiness Patrol because um, the company Bassett's that makes licorice of all sorts believe they um, deserved copyright on it, but they didn't get it. And if you look around here, we've got the sort of, I don't know what this was, but he doesn't appear to be wearing this sort of mask thing, I guess. Um, in all the promo shots, I don't know what that is. I I only just recently watched the Happiness Patrol for a a Doctor Who guide uh live stream, and I even I only got watched part two because, um, Daily Motion was being annoying. But so I can't quite remember what this was for. So yeah, I'm not too sure about that. If I was to say my favourite thing about this custom, it would be the head sculpt. Right from the start, I thought the the head sculpt looked really nice. I think the thing that also annoys me the most is also on the head sculpt is the eyes. I think the um, the swirl on the eyes could have been done better. Although I think it's nice on this one. I just think this one's a bit messed up. Another thing that I think I wish I could improve was the main torso bit here. I think it looks... It's sort of more poofy, like it more pops out on the um, actual prop. But in this case, it's sort of just a bit flatter so it could stand out. Silky, which is a very flat figure. It doesn't look like like a proper figure it just sort of looks really flat and doesn't really pop out at all it doesn't have much of a dimension compared to a standard figure if you look there and then i think a lot of the paint application is quite nice um but i think the main bit problem i have is the uh the, the fact that it's the wrong scale and doesn't really quite fit in i'm quite impressed with some of the paint apps here i think some of this is my best in application, particularly on the head sculpt, I really like the head sculpt. I think if you just look at the head sculpt and then nothing else, you'd be. Oh, Ugh, it's not gonna work. If you looked at the head sculpt and nothing else, I'd be quite happy with that. I like the legs as well. I think I've got the sort of wiring and stuff done quite well here. It's sort of a bit like a Cyberman, the tomb of the Cyberman, Cyberman, or a moon based Cyberman with the piping around the edges of the hands. So, yeah. That is basically the actual um, Candyman figure there. Now I'm going to get a bit into how I made this figure. 
So as you can see there, I've started by sculpting the legs there. So you've got the sort of base for the sort of marshmallow sort of foot. It's a mush, sort of mush marshmallow, I guess. And then you've got the uh, rock candy, I like to think of them as sort of building up and then connected with those wires there as well. And that's basically the first basically the first thing I sculpted was the legs because I thought I could do them really easily. I think the legs and the head, as I mentioned before, I think they came out the best. I don't know if that's just because I was on a roll sculpting that night because I sculpted the head and then the legs. Well, the legs and then the head together at the same time and then the next day I sculpted the rest. So maybe that's why, but you never know. Um... That's basically the legs. That's how I sculpted them. And um, also with this figure, you'll notice that this is almost entirely made out of milliput, whereas my other figures I used a roll base. So this is a bit different. I say almost because I did put a bit of polystyrene in the main bit, the main bit just before the head, that thing that didn't come out very well. Um, mainly because I didn't want to have to use entirely milliput because milliput is expensive and I want to sort of savor as much as I can. But yeah. Otherwise then that is pretty much my first full-on milliput creation. In this next photograph, as you can see, I've started to sculpt out the sort of main torso of the body, the lower torso here. Uh, this is the Bassett's licorice all sorts, but it's not got the black licorice running in the middle yet. Uh, it's just a plain sort of wheel-like circle there, which is pretty thin. Again, as I wish, I thought I, I wish I'd smoothed out the edges of that to make it look more chemically a sort of more factory produced because otherwise it looks a bit more like a natural sort of mushroom form in a way i don't know if it's really a mushroom or such that probably wasn't the best way to describe it but it looks more disc like um like a real basset looks like a thicker disc whereas this is sort of more naturally curvy so that's another thing i think i could probably take away if i was doing this again there you can see there's the head sculpt um as you can see i think that's the thing that worked out best I found just the right colour to paint that as well, so I think that really helps it when it's fully painted. And I just really like the head sculpt. I think the head sculpt, the easiest thing, because it's a pretty simple form to do, and you I just, instead of having the 3D balls, which is the thing that's, that's slightly inaccurate, but instead of having that, I poked it with my stick. My, that's a bit wrong. I poked it with my, <laughs> I poked it with my sculpting. I'm just gonna say stick. I poked it with my, I poked it with my sculpting stick, um, to get that head and get the sort of holes in there that sort of look like the, the sort of, I don't know are they like rock candy sort of like candy. Oh, what's the name? Sprinkles, I guess. They're kind of like sprinkles to get that sort of effect on the actual figure. Here I've started sculpting the sort of main upper torso and the arms and this is my least favourite thing about it as I mentioned. I think I think you can tell when the sculpting knife goes through it to get the sort of lines. It's not very even and it's not very clean cut and I guess again this is a very early on custom for me so I mean these kind of things are never going to be pretty but as a way to sort of if I was ever to try and redo this and I can see myself in a few years going back and redoing this if I keep with these customs. I think I could maybe do that better in future. If I got more, if I get more sculpting stills, I've still got quite, I've literally got the one sculpting stick. I haven't really got anything else to sculpt with at the moment. So maybe like when this lockdown ends in the foreseeable future, I don't know when, but or maybe I'll invest in more sculpting stuff for this. But for the moment, you've got this sort of crinkly, sort of creasy that you can sort of get through when I cut it properly. But so in future, that'll be something I'd like to do. Again, the legs, the arms look a bit fat to me. I mean, I don't know. They sort of look more, again, this is sort of a more natural look. Whereas the thing, the actual creature is more sort of smooth. Which I guess is something I can't really help because, again, I haven't got the right materials. But still, that's something I'd like to improve on in future. Again, I just sort of prodded up a, a little hole to stick the hands in and then I let that dry together like that rather than just trying to sculpt on the hand onto the arm because that never works for me i don't and that's the, it's kind of the same way that they're doing with an actual an actual figure anyway they don't have usually don't have one whole piece you usually have a hand that sort of goes into the um sleeve of the figure particularly with like uh, humanoid figures here the figure is starting to sort of come together there, that's pretty much the full milliput sculpt there. You've got the wires hanging down to that sort of middle section that ex 
exposed section with all the wiring, which I never really quite got round to doing properly. I just sort of painted it grey and hoped for the best. And we've also got the licorice circle implanted there. Basically, the whole thing is together just before being painted. Here is the back, and that's where you can mostly sort of see this sort of um, cracked effect, as I referred to earlier. Um, I think the back, I think it kind of works when you're facing it or when it's on my shelf and you can't really see the back because the back is my least favourite thing about it. I always have a thing where I'm, when I'm sculpting something, it's always the back that goes wrong. But that's at least, at least it's not the front because that's the side you sort of display when it's on like a shelf or anything. So ups and downs, I guess. Here um, is also... Um, I can't just point out here because you can see that I have hot glued um, the bits in together. I think that I didn't have super glue on me because I'm very ill-equipped to do this. But So I think if you were to try and do this, probably do use super glue because the hot glue kept on falling apart and never really quite stuck together. I'm still worried that it's going to fall apart even though I've used hot glue to death on that figure. So just something to be wary about there. Here, the painting is just sort of in progress. Here, you've got the sort of lighter colours. I think the um, I think the best place that I the best place that I painted, to be fair, is that upper torso bit. I think, and the head sculpt. I think the colours are really clean. I really I went over those layers several times. I'm really quite happy with that. Um, the lower bit is where I think the messiest paint application is because the sort of clean lines I've got to do on the uh, sort of upper part of the leg, uh, the sort of thigh section of the figure. I think that's where it probably went wrong the most. And also I, when I, I tried to get that icing detail in, which we'll get to in a minute, I, th I think that didn't go very well, to be honest. I think I preferred it before I tried to do the icing detail. But they're, they're, that's basically in progress. You before I painted the eyes, the sort of circles on the eyes, just sort of you get it kind of looked the sort of matte black, tried to get it as matte black as possible with that. I was quite happy with the sort of different tones and colours I managed to get for this figure and how well they match the actual prop, which was quite happy for me because I don't have the the best supply of different shades and colours of paint, to be honest. My art teachers complained about it in the past. You win some, you lose some, I guess, but that's basically in progress of being painted. Then finally, here is the finished product here, the sort of final character character of the Candyman presented as a figure. I almost said a character option as a figure, and I tried to find a way to sort of insert that into a sentence. But again, I, I really wish that... I don't think a character options ever will, but I really think this would be such a great figure to do. I mean, even if it wasn't, like, I know Harrop, models do some cool models i think they could really pull off a candy man figure quite well i don't know if eagle moss has done a candy man if there is an eagle moss candy man that might just persuade me to get it because as i said this is one of my favorite monster designs it really shocks me that there hasn't been a figure of this i mean why do we have an axon and a crinoid monster and not a candy man i mean I know that you can get both of them because you can basically spray paint it the different the same mold. In fact, in many ways, the crinoid is basically the first B and M figure in a way <laughs> because they've reused the same sculpt. But I mean, like the new B and M figures, I'm just going to touch briefly on it because the new B and M wave has been announced for this year. The new B and M wave is it frustrates me a lot of the time, and sometimes I'm sometimes I'm very happy that we are getting new figures just to stress. But sometimes it does frustrate me because I think while it's okay to do this, the um the way that the B and M range is dealt with for B and M figures for B and M exclusives, I have seen that seep in to the official line, the uh, the proper line with the Graham figure, and even the Thirteenth Doctor figure uses reuses some parts from the Martha Jones figure, and the Graham figure obviously uses the Primeval mold, and that was an official release. I mean. If it had just been a Companions B&M set, I might have let it go. But, I mean, the fact that they have had the Graham figure and then they've gone on to release Yaz and Ryan in a B&M set, it kind of make, cheapens the effect of both the figures, to be honest. I mean, why not have an official release of Yaz and Ryan? I know, I know that's basically being a hypocrite about the point I made before, but it kind of just... It, it both cheapens the actual idea of having a new wave of figures as well as having the new wave of figures basically be a reuse of parts because basically what we got earlier in the year is basically the B&M line. I mean, character doesn't have any lines to spare there. Um, I am very happy with the B&M figures. I'm very excited about them, to be fair. I just wish they were available online. Um, I think June is going to be too early. 
because it's only two to three weeks away and we've still got 500 deaths a day. I don't see that lowering that quickly, to be honest. I think June is a very optimistic bet, to be honest. And I'm certainly not going in June, to be honest. Um, but yeah, that's the B&M, B&M thoughts. Back to the custom figure. Again, this Candyman figure. Again, I'm very happy with it. It's one of my favourite figures. And if, at some point, I might come back to this, particularly that upper torso bit, if I can get the lower body and the head sculpt to come off. Um, that would be something to revisit. It's half term soon, so that means I'll have more time to make customs. I haven't made any um, sort of in-term time because I get a pile load of work. It's just the way it is. I suppose, but yeah, hopefully I'll get more more customs done over the next week. We'll see what I'll, I'll get up to. I'm interested to see if anyone's got any ideas for any customs I should do or I can attempt to do. I'm basically operating on the fact that it's basically Milliput only because I don't have that many action figures that it is and I'm not really willing to sculpt on them because I'm scared I'll screw them up. But, you know, I'll be excited to, to see if there is any sort of exciting customs I could try. I've looked online, there's some interesting ones that I want to try, so I definitely have something to do, and I've still got lots of milliput left, so yeah. I'm quite happy with the finished result, um, I'd love to know your thoughts down below in the comments section. If you like this video, leave a like down below, and subscribe for updates on future content and reviews. Thanks for watching, and goodbye!